What is up, my friends? You are very welcome along to this Fulham preview here on Anfield Agenda. The Reds travelled to Craven Cottage for the second leg of the League Cup semi-final, taking a one-goal lead with us. We know if we don't concede or if we don't lose the game, we are at Wembley and we'll take on the winner, of course, of the Chelsea and Middlesbrough tie, which is taking place on Tuesday. We will be doing a watch-along of that on top of the league if you'd like to join us for it, starting from half past seven. Yeah, so look, what can we expect from this one? I'm going to go through, give you my team prediction, my score prediction. As always, asking you guys to let me know your thoughts in the comments section. This video is sponsored by Surfshark, the best VPN on the market. Surfshark is an app or browser extension that allows you to change your location to access websites in other countries and keep you safe and secure from hackers. Using Surfshark, we here in Ireland can access other countries' Netflix libraries or other streaming platforms like The Zone in Spain for all those important Premier League games. Surfshark keeps you safe and private by protecting everything you do online. Everything. When your device connects to the internet, all that information is, in a way, blurred out. Surfshark is particularly useful for keeping you safe from being hacked if you use public Wi-Fi. Let's say you're in a cafe, you're at college, you're out and about, they've got you covered. Surfshark allows you to use one subscription on unlimited devices, meaning you can share your account with friends or family or that neighbor who's a little bit cheap. On top of all of this, Surfshark offers a 30 day money back guarantee. You can also upgrade to Surfshark One, which includes the VPN, an alert system for breaches related to your data, such as emails and credit cards, and an antivirus software for your desktop. Our sign-up offer gives you Surfshark VPN for a little over two euro a month and you'll get an additional three months free. Simply scan the QR code on screen right now or use the link in the description and enter the code Anfield Agenda at checkout. So look, injury updates and a little bit of homework really. So I didn't include either Ryan Graf not Ryan Gravenberg, Dominic Sobosly or Curtis Jones in my starting eleven because I'm not sure of where we are with those guys at the minute. Even with Gravenberg, if he is back and available for the game, I'd be very surprised if he started it and didn't perhaps come off the bench. And with Curtis Jones, as I sit here recording this. I've no updates, so I don't know where we are, other than, as James Spears said, it looked like he was holding his hamstring when he went down the tunnel at the Vitality uh, in the victory over Bournemouth. So, other than that, we, we are as we were with injuries. No Thiago, no Bocetic, no Robertson, no Costas, no Matip, no Trent. Obviously, Salah and uh, Watoro away at international tournaments, albeit Salah is actually on the way back, but he's still unavailable for selection. Uh, so that's where we are with regards to injuries. Also, remember, this is Cuevin Kelleher's competition. So I know I'm going to look into the comments and see lots of people saying Alison, 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 but these decisions are, are, you know, not mine. And we've seen over and over again that is Kelleher's competition. So it will be Kelleher most likely that starts in goal. So let's start off with the score prediction. And this was a difficult one because. I think there's going to be goals in the game. And I think I may have even undercooked the amount of goals in the game. Uh, Fulham come to play and they'll want to get an early goal. They'll want to put us on the back foot and they'll want to have a big day out at Wembley. And I'm sure Danny Murphy will be there with his Fulham scarf, waving along, hoping Liverpool lose. That's still weird to me, by the way, that he, he said he hopes Liverpool lose the game. Mm. Very strange that. But I kind of get it as well. But ultimately, stop it, Danny, stop it. So what have I gone with? What have I gone with for the score? Well, this is what I've gone with, my friends. 2-1 victory for Liverpool. Could be 2 all. Could be 3-2, could be 3-3. It could be anything because, you know, Fulham are an attack-minded team as well. But I do think and I hope that we'll do enough to get there and then it's a once-off occasion against the winner of, of Chelsea Middlesbrough and may the best team win. But we are just 90 minutes away, so I've got to predict positivity. I've got to think we're going to do it. So let me know if you agree or disagree with that score prediction in the comments section. Now we get into the starting eleven, and the way we start these things, as always, is the goalkeeper and the centre-backs. It'll be Cuevin, Keller and goal, as I've said. And then a Virgil van Dijk and Ibrahim Akanade for me in the centre-back positions. The reason I haven't rotated in Jarrell Kwanzaa for this is because I think both these guys can have a break, or at least one of them can have a break after Wednesday. Looking ahead to Norwich at home in the FA Cup, you would think that Jurgen will, will use that as an opportunity to rotate. And remember, these guys are coming off 11 days without a game as well, so they've had somewhat of a break. So I fully expect they should be able to play two games in three days. So Kanade and Van Dijk in the centre-back positions. 
And for the fullbacks, well, again, no surprise here, really. I'm giving you the same thought process. Connor Bradley and Joe Gomez, for the very reason that we can play either, um, let's say, on Beck at left back if we need to in the FA Cup. And that's my thought process is go strong for this one. Have a strong bench in the FA Cup and give some lads minutes. And if we need to bring the talent off the bench or the, you know, the established talent, so be it. So it's going to be Conor Bradley at right back, Gomez at left back and Verge and Canade as your centre backs. But going into midfield, it became a little bit trickier because as I've already said, I don't think Jones and Sobosler are going to be able to start the game. So I had to get a little bit creative with it. Not too creative, but this is what I've come up with. Alexis McAllister in the number 10 position and then Ryan Gravenberg uh, and Cody Gakpo in the midfield positions. I was very close to going with Elliot, I have to say, but I also wanted to get Gakpo into the team. And I think with the form that Diogo's in for the centre, it's only fair and right that he starts there. And I actually think that um, Gravenberg and the Gakpo are two of our best ball carriers through the line so I think this is an opportunity to give them both a run out together uh, so that's what I've gone with as I said a little bit creative but look we've seen Gakpo play in that role behind before and that's my midfield Alexis McAllister, Cody Gakpo and Ryan Gravenberg and now up top again you're not really going to see many surprises here on the right-hand side, Luis Diaz. On the left-hand side, Darwin Nunes. And hopefully Darwin can carry on this uh, great little vein of form he's in. First Premier League player so far this season to have 10 goals and 10 assists in all competitions, which is a great start for Darwin. And uh, yeah, I hope he continues to score. On the right, Diaz. And look, for him as well, I'd like to see a bit more end product from Diaz. He offers us a lot. Sometimes I feel he holds on to the ball a little bit too long. Uh, takes shots and positions where I'd like to see him get his head up and maybe try to thread through a teammate. But all in all, he's a hard-working player. But that is the part for me that, I've got to be honest, kind of still holds me back a bit with Diaz. I feel like we need a few more goals from him. Um, so yeah, Diaz on the right-hand side for me and Darwin on the left. And then through the centre, who have I gone for? Well, of course I've gone for the one you thought I've gone for. And it was good to see Jamie Carragher actually Big up Diogo Jota. I suppose you should reveal his name there, shouldn't I? Diogo Jota will be through the centre. Good to see Jamie Carragher give Diogo Jota a lot of praise after his performance against Bournemouth. Uh, deserved praise. As he said, very natural finisher. Got himself two goals and an assist. And in this form, I mean, it'd be stupid, wouldn't it? Not to play him. He, the man knows where the back of the net is. I'm sure Fulham would rather he didn't play, but that's why exactly why he should. And I think he's going to get himself another goal. And I think he's going to steer us to the final. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is my predicted 11 for the game against Fulham. As you can see, I've gone for a 2-1 victory. And again, just to recap the team selection, Quivin Kelleher in goal because, well, it is his competition. We await Pep Linder's press conference and information about those other players who are coming back or what to expect from Curtis Jones as an example how bad that is. Right back, Connor Bradley. And I hope he continues to play as well as he has because... If he does, there's a question about even do we need to go into the market in the summer for a fullback if Connor Bradley continues doing what he's doing now. Left side, Joe Gomez. I think we can rotate for own Beck or somebody else, as I mentioned, uh, at the weekend of the FA Cup. And then our captain, Virgil van Dijk and Ibrahim Akanade. Uh, in the midfield, as I said, Alexis McAllister had his best game for us, in my opinion, in the number six role. So let's see him continue there. And it's going to be a real interesting thought process for Jurgen to see who he starts when Endo comes back. Does he stick with McAllister or push him a little bit further forward? And then I've got creative with, with Cody Gakpo and Ryan Gravenberg. Up top, Luis Diaz on the right, Darwin Nunes on the left, and of course Diogo Jota through the centre. Now it is over to you guys. Let us know your thoughts in the comments section. Do you agree with my team selection? Do you disagree? And of course, the scoreline as well. Maybe you think it's going to be a more cagey affair or perhaps a higher scoring affair. Hard to know with Liverpool and Fulham games because... You know, they're attack-minded. Anthony Robinson's going to be flying up and down that wing. And I'm thinking Conor Bradley's going to have a very difficult, but maybe very productive evening as well. So that is it for me. I will be back, uh, as we always are, for the daily streams, 4 o'clock and half eight usually. Although you'll probably be watching this on the Tuesday, in which case I'll be on top of the league for the first uh, semi-final second leg between Chelsea and Middlesbrough. That sounded weird, the first semi-final second leg, but there we are. So I'll talk to you then, my friends. Much love as always. Thank you for watching. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.